Hello everyone, we are going to begin our unit today on the Renaissance and we're just going to focus on the early Renaissance and also this concept of humanism because without understanding this new philosophy that is developing, we really won't be able to place any of the other significant events that are happening in the Renaissance. So today we're going to look at the early Renaissance and the philosophy of humanism. So you guys have your notes set up, so as we go through you can just fill in your notes and feel free to pause um, and, and rewind if you need to and we will get going. So this is this is a review of what we've done through the decline of feudalism and also the, the, the Crusades. So we know that the Crusaders um, are bringing back all these goods which is introducing trade to Europe. Um, they're interacting with ideas that are coming from the Islamic Empire and also China. So these these things are occurring. Um, we know that peasants or serfs are are, are gaining their their wealth. Um, they're getting freedom from no, from nobles. Um, towns and cities are developing where lower class people have a little bit of a, a voice in government. So those changes are occurring. Bigger Italian city states, like some of your classmates taught you about the other day, um, they are developing like Florence and Venice and Genoa. They really have huge monopolies on trade routes with the Middle East and that's really just because of their amazing perfect <clears throat> excuse me location in the Mediterranean and from there also other trade groups begin like the Hanseatic League up in the north in the Baltic Sea so there's all these trade groups developing also uh, the Vikings go over land they actually um, go over land and bring goods up to northern Europe so there's all this different trade going on um, we know the money system has been introduced, which is great. You don't have to lug around all those coins. And because of all these changes, bankers and merchants are gaining wealth and influence. And also those guilds are developing as well. As a result of this, we have this concept of the Renaissance, which means, which is translates to um, rebirth. So it's a rebirth of classical art and learning. And in this case, classical we mean classical civilization, those things, so Greece and Rome, so ancient Greece and Rome. So we're, scholars are returning back to those two civilizations and the things that they study. We are going to focus on Renaissance Italy to begin with, and these are city-states. Instead of kingdoms like a lot of the rest of Europe, they're city-states in Italy. And a lot of them, they have, they fought for their independence and they become republics, just you know, similar to, to us today. But really they're ruled by merchants and bankers, so they have the most influence. So if a merchant is telling you what to do, then you're gonna go vote for who the merchant is supporting. And they really become almost like royal dynasties because the families have so much influence, they just continue to rule year after year. So almost, I don't know if this is the best way to, to connect it, but almost kind of like a, like an early mob, but not as violent, you could say. So the, this is what's going on. We have all these powerful, interconnected city-states in Italy. And one of the most influential is the Medicis. The Medicis have, they end up having four popes in their family. Um, they become patrons of the arts and commission works by some of the really famous artists that we are going to talk about. Um, further down the line in our unit, and they develop power in the 1400s. And again, this really important part is they become patrons. And this is a vocabulary word that we're going to review again. Um, this is someone who supports the arts by commissioning works from artists. So they pay someone to make art for them. And another really important thing that these families do that's influential to the Renaissance is that they pay for things like sculptures and paintings and theaters and universities to promote learning in their cities. So one of those cities that we also will focus on in particular is Florence and this becomes just a hot spot of cultural activity so you know, like a modern New York City artists and writers and philosophers really all gather there to study and work and create together. So almost similar to Baghdad in the Islamic Empire at its height. 
remember all those different um, cultures came together and everyone was studying there together. This is the Renaissance version of that. And they spread to the rest of Europe from the 1400s all the way up to the 1600s. So it starts at its heart in Florence and spreads to the rest of Europe. And one of those ideas that spreads is humanism. Just a nice little cartoon for you here. Um, humanists, we go to church for the architecture. So they like going to church, they're not against the church, but they are looking at it from more of a um, human view of it, I guess you could say. And one of the basics of um, humanism, like the, the core belief, is that it is the rediscovery of man as an, as an individual. So no longer is man someone who is their sole task in life is to serve the church and get to heaven. It really comes back down to you are important as a person and you can control your own life and you have free will. It's not God's will whether or not you're going to um, go to heaven or go to hell. It's, it's, it's up to you. You have free will. And you can also do great things. Individuals can accomplish great things no matter their social status. So these are really new ideas that are coming out of the Renaissance. And again, they're referring back to those classical philosophers like Socrates and Plato and Aristotle. They're going back to those thinkers, which again, we can thank um, Islam and the monks for keeping alive for us. But I think what's really important to know is that humanism is not against religion. It is a balance of it. So they, they wanted to try to balance reason and religion. And as humanists gain power, their influence expands to universities and they teach things like history and rhetoric. So, you know, how to, how to give a really good public speech. Um, they apply what they're learning. For example, they do things like they study Roman, Roman ruins to make new and better architecture, which we will talk about soon. This is Brunelleschi's dome in Florence, which is a perfect example of early humanism and how humanism, a philosophy, can actually be reflected in a building. So this philosophy really does bring a lot of uh, concrete changes to Renaissance Europe things like separation of church and state. Wow, that's a really new idea that's coming through. The idea that a priest doesn't necessarily have to read you the Bible. You can interpret it on your own as an individual and make your own inferences about it. Um, improve upon past works through observation. Observation, observation, excuse me. So almost like a precursor to the scientific method. Uh, another ideal is that the purpose of learning is to achieve a happy life. And then here are some characteristics of Renaissance literature and art and how humanism shows up in these. Okay, so individual experiences are the main topic. Again, it's no longer just revolving around religion. Religion may be incorporated into it. So for example, like Dante's um, Divine Comedy, yes, he is going through heaven and hell, which is a religious topic, but it's about his experiences in that in that context. Um, people are real, they have flaws. People can actually be really, really funny. Um, and they, they start to criticize people in their actions. And this reflects the culture of the time that people are feeling it's okay to criticize their fellow man. That's, that's an okay thing. So we are going to talk about um, really soon Dante in, this, in his poem, The Divine Comedy. And again, it shows experiences of individuals. It shows human emotion, which we talked about the other day when we were talking about art and how there's actually some, some emotion in Renaissance art. And again, that social commentary reflecting and explaining about what values are in the 1300s.
Oops, sorry guys. Bear with me. There we go. Sorry about that. So, in class, now that you have learned about the beginnings of the Renaissance, so the Italian city-states gain a lot of wealth through trade, and through that wealth, a lot of patrons begin to commission art. In that art and literature, humanism is explored and expanded and spread throughout Europe, and that concept that the rediscovery of man as an individual becomes really important and affects um, culture in Europe. So in class, I need you to be ready to define humanism, renaissance, and patron. Explain why Italian merchants and traders became so wealthy. And explain how Italian merchants and traders, oh, excuse me, I had that twice, my bad, um, find examples of humanism found in our society. So I think your homework would be to think about this one. Really try to think about humanism in your life, in your in 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 our classroom, in our school, on your sports team, on TV, in songs even. Where can you find examples of humanism in our world? So thank you so much for listening to our video lecture on the early Renaissance and humanism.